Appreciation Basics Problem 3. The cost of an asset is $1,180,000 and its residual value is $100,000. Estimated useful life of the asset is 5 years. Calculate depreciation for the first year using the double declining balance method of depreciation. Okay, depreciation. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Remember, first thing, let's see what it's asking. It's asking to calculate depreciation for the first year using the double declining balance method. Dun, dun, dun. This is the most challenging for students. They always, wow, you know, they don't want to do this one. They're like, oh, give me a straight line, give me a straight line. Double declining balance. We're going to get through this. Take a breath, take a break. If, if you need to stop a video, we're going to get through this one. It's, 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 once you understand the steps, it's not that difficult. It's just make sure, and I'm going to actually go further. I'm going to go further to show you how to calculate this in future, in other years. All right. Now, before we go into the steps, let's just read the question again. The cost of an asset is $1,180,000, residual value $100,000, estimated useful life of the asset is five years. Estimated useful life of the asset is five years. All right. We've got all the information we need. Now, the problem does not say that it was placed in service partway through the year, so we assume that it was placed in service at the beginning of the year. Also, it doesn't tell us it's any type of other year other than calendar year, so we assume calendar year. All right, so the formula. There's a few different ways you can do double decline balance in terms of the formulas. There's step approach. There's, there's a formula approach. I, I'm going to show you multiple or two different ways that I like to think of it. So the formula that a lot of faculty and a lot of textbooks and a lot of exams, they, they tell you to, to learn, it's cost minus accumulated depreciation. And I'll explain why we're doing this in a moment. Accumulated depreciation times two for double decline balance times one over the useful life in number of years. All right. So this is the formula. This is the formula that a lot of people will use. And I'll show you calculating it using this approach. And then I'll show you another approach you can do, which takes parts of the formula, but it puts in more of a step approach that helps you better understand it conceptually what's going on. So this cost minus accumulated appreciation, we, we call this the book value or, or sometimes you'll see it called the net book value. We can call it that too. Net book value of the fixed asset, the property, plant, and equipment. Now, because it's double decline balance, we multiply by two, and then the it's double decline balance is double the straight line. So one over the useful life would be straight line. Doubling that rate would give us double decline balance. So we're doubling the straight line rate. That's what that's all about. Now, some of you out there might be wondering, well, huh, every year we're going to take this same calculation and double it and use that same percentage, that same amount, and multiply by the net book value? No, every year we adjust. So we adjust each year, and specifically that net book value adjusts. We look at how it was calculated last year, the net book value at the end of last year, and we recalculate for year one. Let's look for our cost, $1,180,000, right here, minus accumulated depreciation. So in year one, you look to the depreciation that was taken at the end of last year or the beginning of this year you know, before any depreciation is taken, which in year one, there's nothing. So our net book value is $1,180,000. We multiply that by, again, the doubling of the straight line rate which if we're told one over the useful life, so one over five equals 20% times two, that's 40%. So we're going to multiply the net book value of $1,180,000 times 40%, and that's going to give us $472,000. Now I want to stop for a second. Notice that we're told the residual value is $100,000, and some of you out there might be saying, whoa, 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 you're doing this wrong. No. Double decline balance, we ignore. We ignore the residual value until the end, until we get closer to the end. Ignore at the beginning. Ignore the residual value at the beginning. Now, straight line, we use it all the time, and that you're right, we do that. We do that. 
Now, I just answered the question. $472,000 is the first year double decline balance calculation of depreciation, and I used that formula. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how we do the second year. So the second year, what you're doing, you're still taking that cost, $1,180,000, and you're going to subtract away the total depreciation that's been taken over the life of the asset. So the accumulated depreciation, the total amount. Well, in year one, you, so you add up all the previous years. Well, year zero, zero. Year one, we took $472,000. $472,000. That gives us $708,000. We then are going to multiply $708,000 by the same 40%. It's the same calculation for each year, 40%. And with that, we multiply 708,000 times 40%. We're going to get $283,200. Then we go to year three. In year three, we're going to do again $1,180,000. We're going to subtract away both year one and year two combination of depreciation. So that's going to be the $472,000 plus the $283,200. So let's multiply, I'm sorry, let's add those two numbers together. We're going to get 755,200. We're going to take that number, 755,200, and subtract it from $1,180,000, and we're going to get $424,800. We then multiply that by 40%. That's going to give us. One hundred and sixty nine thousand nine hundred and twenty. Then we go to year four. So we move over to year four. In year four, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna write it out for you. Well actually yeah I will. We do one million one hundred and eighty thousand minus the total depreciation. So we add together the first three years of depreciation. That gives us a sum of nine hundred and twenty five thousand one hundred and twenty. That equals 254,880. We're going to multiply that by 40%. And that number is 101,952. Now, here's the interesting about year five. Remember, we're told that there's a residual value of $100,000. So if we get to year five and we do the same calculation we've been doing, right, the $1,180,000, I need to gather all the depreciation, the 925, 120 plus the 101, 952 in year four. What you're going to get is 1027072 Now, if you subtract that away in year five from $1,180,000, the cost, the net book value, it's going to equal a number that if you multiply by 40%, the depreciation you take, if you were to take that depreciation away, the residual value would not be left. There would not be $100,000. So in year five, what we do is... Basically, we take the amount of depreciation that's taken already. So in year five, and I'll do this on the side here. Year five, we basically have to do a separate calculation. We don't continue doing. By the way, if you keep doing the 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, it's like that old trick, like, you know, if you keep doubling something uh, or taking half of something, right? If you, like you, let's say you um, are standing between a wall, like six six feet between you and a wall, and then take three feet from that, and now you're, th you're out and you move three feet, and now you're three feet from the wall, and then you take half of that, and now you're one and a half feet. You take half of that, right, and you keep going and going and going. You're never going to get to zero. It's going to keep getting halved and halved and halved and halved. That's basically what you're doing with this 40% of the number. You're never going to get to that amount. So the idea is that under the double decline balance, we keep going, and then if there's no salvage value in the last year, you just take whatever's left, or if there's residual value or is salvage value, then what you do in the last year is you cap the book value. So we set the book value in year five equal to $100,000. And by the way, depending on how many years you have, this might be done before the last year. It might be done, let's say you're doing seven years or 10 years. If you're doing 10 years, it might be done in year eight. It might be done in year seven, depending on the numbers, depending on what's going on. In, year, in, in um, seven years, it might be done in year five, depending on the numbers. Again, it's not mathematically to where it's always going to be the last year, but it's close to the last year. For a five year, for these numbers, it will take place in year five. So in year five, we set the book value, the net book value, 
to five hundred thousand. I'm sorry, one hundred thousand dollars. I've got five in my mind. One hundred thousand dollars. Now, again, if we were to calculate the uh, book value at the end of year four, at the end of year four, the book value of the asset is going to be one million one hundred eighty thousand dollars minus nine hundred twenty-five thousand. 120 minus what we calculated in year four, the 101, 952. And the amount we're going to get is 152, 928. So that's what the book value is at the end of year four, rolling into the beginning of year five. If we need the book value to equal 100,000, we're just going to subtract away 100,000. So that means depreciation in year five is going to be 52,000. 928, which is not the same thing as taking 152, 928, and multiplying that times 0.4, because if you multiply that times 0.4, you're going to get 61,170, So see how we have to calculate in year five, the last year, we have to basically plug in that salvage value. So it does come into place at the end, that residual salvage value at the end, but at the beginning it does not. And that is how we calculate the double decline balance going through the years. Now, a few things I want to mention. Well, first thing, I want to mention is the answer. The answer is 472,000. I know I circled year two. Let me um, erase that. I'm going to erase that that uh, circle around year two. The answer is $472,000. That is the correct answer, the one I just circled. So keep that in mind. That is all we're solving for here is the amount of depreciation under the first year under double decline balance. The next thing I want to mention is I said that, okay, the formula that we use I recommend using that formula if you can. And I showed you, you know, how you do it each year. So if you were asked for year two, year three, year four, year five, I just went through and did that for you. You do this, you do that same formula. A better way to think about it is if you want to do steps. So step one, you can basically just go with the reverse order. Step one, take one over the useful life. Step two, multiply that by by two. Right, so step one: if we take one over the useful life, we get twenty percent. Right, one over five is twenty percent. Step two: multiply twenty percent times two, because again, it's double decline balance, so we're doubling it. That gives us forty percent. Step three: multiply by the updated book value at, from the beginning of the year. So the updated book value, and that's what this calculation is. So. Again, step one, calculate one over useful life, which gives you a percentage. Step two, you're going to multiply that percentage by two. And step three, you then are going to multiply that number by the net up, the updated net book value looking at the beginning of the year. That's how you do this. It's just a three-step process. The key is that you use the updated book value. You can think of step four as using the uh, plug as the salvage value at the end because that's very important as well. So keep that in mind. That's really everything for double decline balance. The only other thing that you could see is maybe in the first year it's placed in service partway through the year. We saw that in a previous problem. You would just take the amount of depreciation under double decline balance and then you would just multiply it by that percentage for that year. So if it was halfway through the year, you would take one half of the amount you calculate using this formula. If it was placed in service with two months left, right? You placed in service the beginning of November or the end of October. You have two months left during the year. You would multiply the amount you calculate by two months over 12 months. That's all you would do. You would just adjust it the same way you did in a straight line in a previous example. So keep that in mind. Again, double decline balance can be challenging, but go through this example many times and you'll understand it.